It's the first day of spring quarter at Stanford's Graduate School of Business. Fifty students excitedly file into a lecture hall, a few still wondering whether the course they've registered for is an elaborate joke played by the administration. Humor Serious Business is about to begin. Whiteboards line the walls. All the chairs and tables have wheels for easy rearranging. It's a setting that's ideal for workshopping and terrible for napping. Jennifer, in her self-appointed role as class DJ, has David Bowie's Rebel Rebel blasting. I have a clip from Saturday Night Live queued up to kick off the lecture. And yet, trepidation hangs heavy in the air. Before class begins each semester, we have our students complete a humor audit, which is a self-reflection exercise slash terrifying personal quiz about how they use humor in their lives. It includes questions like, who or what makes you laugh the most in your life? And who do you feel the funniest around? And please submit complete documentation of your income, expenses, and assets for the previous fiscal year. Surprise, this was an IRS audit after all. So it's understandable that the students feel spooked. A sense of humor is like a muscle. It atrophies without regular use. Unfortunately, we find that in most students and executives we work with, atrophy abounds. Just look at these responses to the question, when was the last time you really laughed? One student said, I honestly can't remember. Is that terrible? Another said, I've been thinking and drawing a blank. I know I laugh, or at least I thought I did, which now I'm questioning. And another said, on Tuesday, I did not laugh, not once. Who knew a class about humor could be so depressing? The good and bad news about these responses is that our students are not alone. Also, it's not Tuesday. We figured we had a one in seven shot on the Tuesday line, so we took the swing. To some extent, this pattern makes sense. As kids, we laugh all the time. The average four-year-old laughs as many as 300 times per day. The average 40-year-old, for comparison, laughs 300 times every two and a half months. Oof. Then we grow up, we enter the workforce, and suddenly we become serious and important people, trading laughter for ties and pantsuits. Before long, we lose levity entirely in a sea of bottom lines, slide decks, and mind-numbing conference calls. Our sense of play is repressed by a dizzyingly complex and dynamic professional environment, full of social landmines that are difficult to gauge and feel safer to avoid. As a result, most of us choose to keep our interactions sterile, measured, professional. We go to work each day and we leave our sense of humor and so much more of ourselves at the door. This response signals a fundamental misunderstanding about how to work, how to solve important problems, how to conduct ourselves, and how to be successful. We don't need more professionalism in our workplaces. Instead, we need more of ourselves and more human connection especially as in-person meetings are replaced by video chats and more relationships are sustained entirely by email, Slack, Asana, TikTok, and whatever has replaced this by the time you're listening. Often, all it takes is a hint of levity to shift a moment or a relationship from transactional and robotic to relational and authentic. So what's holding us back? Our research reveals four common misperceptions, or as we like to call them, the four deadly humor myths. We read once that if you insert the word deadly into a title, people will be more likely to read the subsequent content and take it more seriously. Also, Nelson Cowan, the author of The Magical Mystery Four, calls the number four magical and a mystery, which is why we were all the more delighted to uncover that there are four myths. Also note, Cowan's book would have been way more popular had he not forgotten to include the word deadly in the title. We surveyed more than 700 people across a wide range of industries and levels about what holds them back from using humor at work. Four themes emerged, each rooted in a myth that needs debunking. It's Mythbusters, Business Edition. <laughs> 